Howdy there, folks. You're listening to another exciting episode of You're Not My Father. Coming to you not so live from our studios here in Anchorage, Alaska. Get ready. I'm a podcast superstar. Welcome back to another exciting episode of You're Not My Father, the show where we uh, give you fatherly advice, whether you like it or not, whether you need it or not, whether you have a father or not, a lot of knots in there, (laughs) but we'll do our best to untie all those. Um, So one of the things that we want to talk about today, I want to talk about today is cleanliness, bathing. Uh, Yes, it is one of the cornerstones of civilization in your home. That cleanliness I'm talking about, but I'm not talking about cleaning your room either. Uh, not really. What I'm talking about is personal hygiene. And as a reformed child, <laughs> I recall baths. It's been a great time to play in the water, maybe read some comics, and overall just relax. But I certainly didn't look at it as a necessity. It was like a tradition, I guess. It wasn't until later on when my sense of smell, and more importantly, my classmates' sense of smell, started to develop that I began to notice. I think it was somewhere along middle school that all that happened. Puberty, <laughs> puberty was kicking in, of course, uh, if you can spell it and say it. And without any male role models around, because my dad was always gone, how was I to know that you should be bathing daily? I'll back that up and say, you know, my mother really wasn't involved in my everyday either. So we were kind of like free range kids. But I recall that somehow or another, the rumor got around, you know, back then, that I didn't take a bath every day and that I smelled bad. And that was horrifying to me, solely on the basis that a girl had said it. In that time, I was badly trying to reform my image to girls because puberty, wanting to impress girls, of course. And I was trying really, really hard, uh, especially for my prepubescent mind, if you will. But there was an unexpected shame of, wait, what? I have to take a bath every day? Why wasn't I told this? Of course, I'm sure my parents had told me this at some point, probably, and probably went in one ear and out the other. I think I might have even had a girlfriend at the time. It probably wasn't long after that that I broke up with her. I don't recall if it was out of spite or something else. I'm sure I was mean. I think I was (laughs) ended up throwing her swatch watch at her, and I'm sorry for that. If you are listening to this, um... I think I left, definitely learned a lesson. I'm sorry. And that lesson is to be respectful to other people and to keep it clean. I don't just mean be to people, but uh, be respectful and clean to other people and to yourself. Anyway, over time, my grooming habits have matured, gotten more advanced, but I'll give you the basics. Um, And these are things that I think that you should be following on a regular basis um, every day. So number one. Oral hygiene is a must. Take care of your teeth. That's what you got to do. Floss is just about more important than brushing your teeth, arguably so. So set yourself up for success. That's the big thing. Huge, huge part of this. You have to set yourself up for success. When they say, you know, not preparing is preparing to fail or something like that. So you have to have to keep things around you that are dental related. Now, personally, I love floss sticks. Now it's a combination of floss and toothpick. They're green. They're really, really great. I prefer the, uh, I think it's the Colgate model. (laughs) It's in a green bag. Um, Works really, really well. Um, But don't reuse them after a day or a few hours if you're traveling. Um, You probably could, I guess. Um, But, you know, keep enough with you. But at home, reuse after every session worth the floss breaks. It, but, you know, here's another thing. It doesn't have to be untouched clean, you know, super, super clean for every tooth. You know, just for that session, go ahead and clean it out. And, you know, use your good judgment. You know, if it doesn't look, uh, if it's like, wow, that's really dirty. <laughs> Got a lot of stuff out of my mouth. Um, you could rinse it off um, or you could try it again. Just get another one. When it out, throw it out. That's what I say. And so afterwards, you just rinse and swish water or or really better, you know, really good mouthwash uh, to flush out the rest. And sometimes before I floss, uh, sometimes I flush 
flush. <laughs> it's not a toilet. Um, I floss before I brush. Um, but either is fine as long as you're consistently cleaning your teeth on the regular. Um, that's that's the big deal. Um, keeping that habit. Um, habits are a big big deal. Number two, take a shower every day. <laughs> I know, you know, baths are wasteful. They're more of a luxury and every once in a while. And they don't really get you clean per se. Whatever dirt or funk was on you is just kind of in your bath. You know, it's kind of like a it's like a soup, you know, you're you're in that soup. But a shower can save you water. It can be super relaxing and it can get you really clean real quick. So what I'll do is I'll typically rinse off first, scrub up my body, get it clean, shampoo my hair and beard, use a shower brush to make sure I'm getting that deep clean. And uh, then I wash my face with a face cleanser of cleaner. <laughs> and if you've never used a shower brush before, when I say a shower brush, like it's for your hair. Um, it's like a, it's like a square octangle kind of thing with little brush bristles on it. And it has like a, a finger guard and you just kind of stick your finger in there and you, as you're sh- scr- scrubbing your hair with shampoo, um, you're getting down and, you know, getting in there. Um, it works out really, really well. Um, I have some dandruff or dry scalp or whatever you want to call it. And, uh, this, this helps, it helps that, you know, medicated, uh, shampoo get in there and, you know, get to work and tingle and stuff like that. Anyway. So once you're, once you're done with that, you know, um, like I said, wash your face with face cleaner. Um, <laughs> I'm 46 now I'm still using, um, uh, we call it acne scrubs and stuff like that for a guy. Um, you know, I'm, well, I'm not a taboo kind of guy or whatnot, but, um, I, I go get the best girl stuff I can. Uh, really it's because, I mean, guys are not really too much into the whole taking care of yourself and, and whatnot. I'm sure there's guys out there there now that do it, but it's not as common. You still have that macho, kind of vibe going on. So no, I'll I'll go find the best stuff that, that women are using. I'll use it. I don't care. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes to win. (laughs) Uh, and I'll use that face cleaner. Um, that's usually my last thing after, after I'm done that it's time to rinse off, get out, relax for a few minutes, take a, take a minute. Um, you know, get dried up or whatever. If I'm feeling really indulgent, what I'll do is I'll just kind of, chill out in the shower for a couple minutes. Um, I do a lot of my best thinking in the shower, shower thoughts. It's really where it's at. Um, I can't recommend it enough. Um, if you have a luxury of being able to use water like that, which, uh, up here in Alaska, we do for the most part. (laughs) Uh, number three, (laughs) when it comes to cleaning yourself after using the bathroom, I mean, you're, you're neither regions and you're posterior. (laughs) <laughs> when in doubt, wash it out. Now, for, for those of you that are in, you know, outside of the United States, you probably maybe have a bidet. And so you're literally already doing this. But in countries like here, where you're still using toilet paper, sometimes you think that the paperwork is done and then you're done. Well, it's, it's really not, um, you know, because you're not really getting yourself clean. You're not, <laughs> you know, if you got something on yourself, like let's suppose you're eating fried chicken. This sounds really gross to go from poop to fried chicken. But if you're eating fried chicken and then you take a napkin and a paper napkin, not wet, not a wet nap, and you just kind of wipe your hands off, you know that you're not clean. You know it. Don't try to <laughs> don't try to pull it over on me. You can't tell me that you're that you're not clean. And that's really what's going on with toilet paper. Um, so if you don't have a bidet, um, one of the things that I do is I will do my business before I get in the shower because I want to be clean. So if it's questionable, you know, if you're just not clean, whatever, um, get in the shower and just rinse off, you know, applying more toilet paper and just rubbing that area like a marker, (laughs) it's going to irritate it. And you're probably going to have, you know, a regular difficulty pooping and you know, if, if that's the case, you need more fiber in your diet too, more vegetables. Um, overall, going potty 
And I say that because I'm a father. <laughs> going potty should not be a long ordeal. Um, sitting on the toilet, um, you know, for a long time can create other issues like hemorrhoids. And I know, I know this from, from, from experience. Um, I've been a person that sat on the toilet for a long time. I've been trying to get away from that. And so, like I said, I prefer to go poop right before I take a shower. It's typically in the morning. That way I can feel 100% fresh and ready to go. You know, so there you go. Um, you know, number four, um, one of the you know bigger ones for me is um, use deodorant and some cologne. Now, I'm not saying that you have to try and impress people, that uh, you have to get out there and, you know, spend money to do something for somebody else. Um, certainly if that's your prerogative not to do that, that's okay. But deodorant is a, is a must for most people, in my opinion, and I think you should use it. And so I prefer, prefer the clear versions of deodorant instead of the chalky white stuff. Um, latter ones just unsightly. You can leave a mess on your clothes. Um, I'll change up my deodorant on a fairly regular basis as kind of a way to keep me interested in that process. And some of them just, you know, smell great, you know, um, but cologne, I think, is a must-have for most folks, but it's not always the case. I'm, I've met some people who seem to be allergic to deodorant and allergic to uh, cologne, if you can imagine that. Um, people, there are people out there. And, um, yeah, but, I mean, if you're going to be in society, it, it's it's a good thing to, to have, you know, that you smell good um, to other people, um, even if it's something simple. I'm not going to say that you you need to go do that and then go out in the yard and get all hot and sweaty. I think you can get it to take a pass on that. But if you're going to go to work like with other people, go to school, yeah, a little bit of that cologne helps to keep those closer inter- interactions a, a little bit more pleasant. Now, pro tip, best pro tip on this right here, don't use a lot. <laughs> you don't want to bathe in it. Um, not at all. Not at all. Um You know, people think, you know, well, you know, I can't smell it anymore. Well, the problem is that you grow accustomed to that smell pretty quickly because it's on you all day and you you just don't smell it as well. Just because you can't smell it as well doesn't mean everyone else can't either. Generally, they can. So think if someone gives you a hug, the experience should be, hey, you smell good. As opposed to walking into the room and someone says, what the hell is that smell? That should be really kind of the impression. You know, somebody gets in your personal space in that that zone. Um, that's where they should kind of get a good whiff of you. Um, does it have to be expensive? No, but it should be something decent. You know, um, Axe body spray. Come on, <laughs> you can get a little better than that. Um, but if you can't, that's all right too. Um, you know, find something that that works for you. Um, if people tell you, hey, that smells great on you. Hey, it's probably it probably does. If, if that's the kind of response you're getting on a regular basis um, and everything smells different on other people. Um, what you may smell on your buddy uh, may smell completely different on you. So, um, yeah, there, there's a whole world to the whole cologne thing. There's nighttime and daytime colognes and different names mean different things like a, cult, a true cologne versus an Edouard toilet <laughs> are two different types. Um, they're meant for different things. Um, so there's lots of good YouTube videos on if You can just imagine just about everything about perfume. Um, and so um, instead of going to Target or Walgreens, picking up something, you know, it's in a glass case, you don't really know what you're getting unless somebody told you my recommendation is go to a department store, like a department store, the mall or something else like that and go to the makeup perfume counter and talk to them. They give really great advice. And while the perfume may be more expensive, their expertise is worth getting the right thing. As a teenager, (laughs) I'll admit the ladies love me and typically gave me freebies and discounts. 1000% worth it. Um, they weren't just trying to sell me something. They were trying to find the right thing that smelled good on me. And it was it was really worth it. 
I can't really say about nowadays, but um, that was how it worked back then. And I think it's still how it works now. Number five, keep your clothes clean, son, daughter, <laughs> loved one. Keep them clean. Um, digging through a pile of clothes on the floor isn't going to help. Wrinkles, all <laughs> BO smells and whatever else. It's just bad news. Make sure you dry your clothes right after they're washed. <laughs> if they smell bad after being left in the washer for a couple of days, uh, spinning in the dryer ain't going to help them. So do your laundry, fold, hang, hang them up, put them away as, as you need to be. That's why people typically sit around and wait for the washer and dryer to finish up um, because they, they know how that works. So use that knowledge to win. You know, you're, you're going to take advantage of everything you can to, to be that better person. Um, that's, that's how you're going to get there. Um, so that's my five grooming habits, you know, <laughs> in review, oral hygiene, take care of your teeth, big points here, set yourself up, up for success, have floss sticks, have toothpaste, have mouthwash ready to go. Take it with you. You'll never not use them. Take a shower every day. Um, take, <laughs> take a longer shower every once in a while. Get yourself mentally there. Do some of your best thinking. You know, clean up everything. Uh, make sure you're paying attention to, to every part of your body. Um, use a different shampoo for your hair and your beard, if you have one, than your body. Um, they are different. Um, <laughs> number three, clean yourself after using the bathroom. Um, you can apply my philosophy to it and take a shower afterwards. Some people don't go poop <laughs> just once a day. Uh, but if you are, probably wouldn't be a bad idea to go take a shower afterwards. Don't spend a lot of time on, on the, on the potty, <laughs> the toilet. Um, if you are, you need to clear that up. You need to get some more fiber in your diet. Number four, keeping some deodorant, some cologne. Um, don't, don't apply a whole lot. A little bit goes a long way. Deodorant typically is the, the obverse of that case. You could put on a lot of deodorant, you know, stick deodorant, but not a lot of spray. There's a difference between spray cologne and uh, body spray and then deodorant. Definitely bigger. Big differences. Number five, keep your... Keep your clothes clean too. Um, take care of them. You know, people are going to look at your clothes first and probably you. Um, it's definitely an indicator of, of who you are. Um, and if your clothes smell bad, it doesn't matter how clean you are, you're going to smell bad too. So there's your five tips for staying clean and, and healthy and good good hygiene really is what that boils down to. So I'm going to give you an update on where we're at as a family now. <laughs> um, we're just about a week after our uh, COVID isolation, if you will. So the prevailing thought in the Anchorage school board and the Anchorage area is um, 10 days after you have symptoms um, is whenever you can kind of come out of an isolation and become another part of society. So that was Saturday. We fulfilled that option. Um, it is now Wednesday. Um, we have still kind of tended to be a little mm, houseborn, you know, just hanging around the house for the most part. Um, as far as medically symptom wise, um, most of us are doing really fine. Um, Conan and Sophia are doing more than well. Um, me and my wife are, are doing okay. Um, still having, I wouldn't say symptoms per se, but more allergy things and things like after you have a cold, like maybe you still have a lingering cough here and there. Um, certainly not an all day type of thing, but you get up in the morning and you have a little bit of a cough or, you know, happens in little bouts or whatever. Um, <clears throat> definitely more to the uh, allergies type of area, I guess, if what you'd say. 
Um, outside of that, we've been doing pretty good. Um, I've been on vacation for the past week, so that's been nice. Um, a lot of, a lot of things that go on whenever you get older, um, for me was, it was, and is that, you know, have much more of a sense of responsibility than what I used to have. And so kind of like Atlas, you know, you've got this big rock that you're carrying around <laughs> all the time. And it's it's hard to to let that stone kind of off of your shoulders. Um, if anything, you kind of feel like maybe it should be on your shoulders more as opposed to, oh, oh, oh I miss whenever I didn't have it on there. Um, so vacation for me is is really kind of it's a mental thing. It really is um, completely mental. Um, it, it, I, I think for some people, you know, vacation means, you know, run around, do everything, visit all the stuff, go to places and, and whatnot. Um, while I enjoy that type of thing, um, a lot of times it feels like most of my time is just kind of get sucked up and, and burned away. Um, I like to use a lot of my free time like this for, you know, well, several things, a mental introspection of sorts to really kind of understand, you know, where I've been, um, how I can digest those things <sighs> and really kind of push myself forward with whatever it was. So it's like having a meal, I think, in that you have that meal and then you have to let it digest and, Maybe you contemplate it a little bit longer, you know, like was the steak good or the fries good? How about that asparagus? You know, the squash was great. Green bean casserole, you know, <laughs> whatever, whatever it was. And um, you keep thinking about it and you think about it. And, you know, I don't know. It, it's, it's hard to say. Um, I usually go on a vacation with these great big plans that, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. And, and really it's another rock that gets thrown on top of me. It's like, okay, well you need to do this. You've got X amount of days. And if you don't get it done, then you're a loser. And <laughs> all these other um, non-positive type things that go on in the back of your head, my head. And so I, I try to tune out that internal monologue of, you know, here's what you have to do. Here's what you, whatever, because that is the soundtrack that plays in my mind all day, every day, you know, that here are the things that you have to do. You got to get them done. And during normal days, I'm attuned to that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in tune. I'm in step with it. Um, and I'm not happy or sad about it or whatever. It's just, it's what I have to do. But when I'm on vacation, I'm actually kind of failing at taking the rest and recuperation that I'm supposed to be doing by thinking about work related stuff or things that I absolutely have to do. So <laughs> in some ways it's this, you know, a Japanese concept of, I think it's called Mushin, which is no mind. So I'm trying to step out of, myself and my mind and really embrace that type of philosophy that, you know, I'm just going to be, and I'm going to enjoy the things that I like without necessarily having a, a true plan. And, and honestly, it's usually about the end of my vacation is when that gear sh kind of locks, you know, the shift kind of happens and, gets into that gear. It's usually right about the end. It's usually the last couple of days because it, it takes so much time for me to you know, kind of shift that gear. Um, it, it's hard for me to, to get out of there. Um, <laughs> I like to think of myself as like a train in a lot of regards. Um, it, it takes a little bit of time for me to get up to speed, but once I'm at speed, I'm going. Um, and I feel like I'm an unstoppable force. And sometimes I feel like I can't really stop. 
So hard to get up to speed and then hard to, hard to slow down. Um, and maybe that's a positive thing. I think in some ways that is kind of a positive. Um, if I had to re-roll my own character, I don't know if I would re-roll that aspect of me. Um, cause it certainly helps in a lot of areas, but it works. Um, it can work. Um, things that people talk about, you know, to, to thine own self be true. Um, you know, having the hard conversations with yourself about, you know, who you are and where you're going. Um, some of that happens during my vacation. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, definitely typically a mental vacation. Um, there are plenty that I would say plenty, but there's the odd time that my vacation is, is really, you know, more of the Clark W. Griswold and family, um, <laughs> type of vacation. But, um, no, no, more often than not, um, schedules don't jive and whatnot. And yeah, so. So there you go. Um, yeah. <laughs> what more can I say about um, my mental vacation? Um, I'm still here. Um, you yeah, know, I'm doing the podcast. Just something that I've been really looking forward to. It's been a mental hurdle for me to to get back into doing it because um, I hope you guys are listening to me. I say guys, I mean everybody. Um, I hope that something I say resonates with you, you know, that nugget of golden wisdom, or <laughs> I forget what I called it last time. Um, glugget, nugget, I don't know. Nugget of golden wisdom, whatever it is, golden nugget. Um, I hope that you take something away from these, these ramblings in, in that way. And, and yeah, I kind of want to end on a fun note. <laughs> Some of the things Conan has been saying recently are just hysterical. Um, I think you'll see him on the channel is his, you know, best of I am a, uh, um, where he does these Snapchat filters, which I do not recommend if you have a little kid or if you are a little kid to be involved in any Snapchat and Snapchatting. <laughs> Cause it's really not meant, uh, it's not really meant for kids. It's kind of mature, but the filters are really great. Um, <laughs> some of the things he says, you know, in those things, totally off the cuff, you know, just purely born out of his imagination um, are super funny. And they stick with me on a regular basis. Um, some of the things he says are just, it's, it's wonderful. Um, so, yeah, kids, kids are definitely this amazing force that, uh, yeah, it's one of the reasons why being a father, being a parent of any sort, or even being, you know, in the family of, you know, other kids as people are growing up, it's a wonderful thing. It's beautiful. They'll make you mad. They'll frustrate you. Uh, but every day it's a thousand percent worth it. Um, you might take a vacation from them and you'll miss them pretty quick. So definitely, definitely. If you're a kid, you're magical. You're amazing. Um, try to keep that, keep that magic at bay. Don't ever let somebody uh, try and take it away. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, like me, you know, I'm 46. I, <laughs> I listen to myself. I've got headphones on. And I sound like I'm 23 or something like that. Um, you know, all the responsibilities and all the things that people depend on me for. Um, when I think about them, sometimes I'm just like, wow, <laughs> how did that happen? Um, and I look back at it and yeah, I can, I can tell you how it happened. But, um, the residual selves is, uh, it's definitely still that 23, 24 year old kid who, um, still looks at the world kind of in wonderment, maybe not so much now, but, um, you yeah, know, there's, there's cool stuff out there. There's, there's magic in the everyday world. Um, things that you don't understand that are pretty cool that 
you can always take advantage of. But that's it. That is my 30 minute marker. I want to thank everybody who's listened and continue to listen. Um, a very big thank you. Um, I know I don't ask for support for this channel and I probably won't ever maybe, but, um, just listening and, and making this far really does just make my day. And, um, it's wonderful. And thank you for being who you are and, uh, take care until the next episode. Thank you.